Good evening again, and welcome to beautiful Monona Terrace and Destination Next, uh, setting our sights on Madison's future. My name is Jeanette Rickers. Uh, I'm a local retailer. I own Madison Soul on State Street and Corn Blooms at Hildale, and I am in the tourism industry. And I'm very excited to be with you here tonight. My role here is to introduce Deb Archer, and um, you heard Deb in the other room, but I think I, I, I want to tell you a little bit more about Deb. As board chair, of course, I have the, dis uh, the pleasure of working with Deb. Not only am I a fan of GMCVB as an organization, I'm a fan of Deb's personally. Her work uh, representing the industry and being a champion for the visitor is, is so impressive and it's a true asset, not only to businesses like mine, but also the community as a whole. Ladies and gentlemen, Deb Archer. It's great to have you all here. Thank you so much, Jeanette. It's been an honor and a pleasure to be in this position. Um, I love this city. In talking about this, uh, what's next, I thought it might be good to just spend a couple of minutes talking about you know, where we have been as an organization and where we have been in, as, a, as a destination before we start talking about what's next. Over the, over the past 20 years, we've watched visitor spending because of places like Monona Terrace and the Alliance Energy Center move from $400 million a year to now almost $2 billion. So that is an amazing amount of money that every year visitors bring here, spend, and get circulated in our community. One, a really strategic move we made in 2007 was we did an in-depth research analysis uh, destination visioning study we, that we coined Destination 2020. We were able to identify some incredibly important um, aspirations and things that we needed to do to keep this destination strong. The reimagining of the Alliant Energy Center, 160-acre campus, that is one of our destination's greatest future opportunities. We also learned that Madison is more than a convention and event destination. It's also a leisure destination, it's a healthcare destination, and it's a sports destination. So we've had a lot of success. We worked very hard, um, but we also know we have to keep thinking about what is next. There are things that are going on for our destination that will happen very soon and next, but I'm going to talk about those things after we hear from our speaker. I'm excited to introduce um, a good friend, um, Rick Antonson, here to speak. Thank you, Deb, and good evening. Well, here's a question for you to think about in the next 25 or 30 minutes, and maybe in the next 25 or 30 years. What is it you can do as individuals and collectively, as the tourism industry or as the community, what is it you can do now that will bring benefits for generations that aren't yet born? Think of it, because we know what Madison is like in 2015, and we know that's because people did remarkable things in the 30s or in the 40s or in the 60s or in the 70s. That's why it is what it is today. What's it gonna be like in 2055 or in 2065? That depends on you. A few years ago, Janice and I were in Edinburgh where she was working, and we went to St. Mary's Cathedral for Christmas Eve. And it's this huge, wonderful structure. There was maybe 1,500 other people there going through the, the program. And afterwards, when we left, we went for a glass of wine, and we got talking about how did anybody build a cathedral like that? And then we got into talking about cathedral thinking. And the whole notion, which has been around for a long time, cathedral thinking is about the long term. It's about doing today things that keep the living generation tethered to the future. It's about thinking of things that are intrinsically important that you know you cannot achieve on your own. But if you don't start them, if you don't figure a way to make it happen, nobody's going to have something to pick up after you and take it forward. So the onus is on you for Madison 2055, and Madison 2045, and Madison 2025, and Madison 2016. So you better get busy. It's about today, but with that long-term vision. The cathedral in Cologne was begun in 1284. It finally opened in 1880. Their current phase, they think, will be completed in 2026. It is this ability to envision, to 
get people coalesced around an idea, to stay true to the idea, to work beyond your own scope and see that what you are building is going to work. Eventually, it will come together. There have been many other people who have done it, often not realizing that they themselves were, were cathedral thinking. And for example, there's a fellow, Cyrus Avery, who 50 years after he did what he did in 1926, became known as the father of Route 66. But in 1926, what he was trying to do was to bring business to his hometown of Tulsa, Oklahoma. And he watched as the railways bypassed Oklahoma. He watched as the highways bypassed Oklahoma. And what he wanted to do as a leader in his community was fix the advantage so that it helped his state and it helped his city. That's a task I think we each have when we're in a city. Because a cathedral can be many, many things. A cathedral can be obviously a place for gathering. A cathedral can be a, um, a, a, a building. It can be a park. Uh, it can also be a city. And when people look at city building, the challenges are absolutely profound. So clearly, Frank Lloyd Wright was a cathedral thinker. To design something in the mid-30s and then broach it publicly in 38 and then see the very possibility of it being built, fractured and on again, off again, controversial, die, and then have other people pick up the generational drive and the vision because he was specific about the opportunity. He called it a dream civic facility and it has ended up as a dream civic facility that many of us who have never been here before know of because it is seen as something that is unusual in the world of meeting facilities. You know, we should each be involved in unfinished business and, and we, we, we need help. We need people working with us to elected officials and, and we certainly said this to ours in Vancouver and, and I, I think it's something that, that destination marketing organizations should be saying to their elected officials and people in general should be saying to elected officials and it's simple. Think beyond your mandate act beyond your tenure. Think beyond your mandate, act beyond your tenure. You have a rare, rare opportunity to be cathedral thinkers. You've got a forward-looking city. You've got the, um, the, the square, the, the Judge Dole Square. I mean, that, that's pretty impressive. To see something like that that is such a big part of the downtown area, so close to this center, so close to a couple of the other hotels, the opportunity for that to benefit from cathedral thinking is terrific. So I found myself asking as I was researching a little bit about this place, and I was looking at that square, I wondered, what would John Nolan do? There's somebody that in 2011 saw the specialness of this city, saw not just a, a profound opportunistic future, but one that had to be created. Parks set aside, quasi-grid system put in place. The view was amazing. What, what city planners have done, and in many destinations not done, but what they have done in a place like this is leave open the opportunity to do more down the road. Tourism, more than any other industry, takes down the barriers to understanding. We are about bringing people together to share ideas, to learn from one another, to celebrate our differences. Tourism is a vital force for peace. And the cathedral thought that I leave you with is that one day every leader in the world shares in our belief that safe travel and the right to assemble are fundamental freedoms for all people. Thank you very much. So before I wrap up, I talked a little bit before Rick talked about, so what is next for us? There are a lot of amazing conversations going on right now about this place, about our destination. And the Convention and Visitors Bureau, we are doing, the Sports Commission, we are doing everything we can. We are at the table and talking. Judge Doyle Square that came up tonight, the whole conversation about what is the vision for those two blocks and how do we marry these great opportunities of potentially bringing an amazing company downtown 
and making sure we, bril we build the hotel that will really allow this building, as someone said, it's a chained in racehorse that we need to let go, that we need to unleash. You know, how do we do those two things? The other thing we're really engaged in is co-leading with the county and the city has put money in is what is the future of that 160 acre campus out the Alliant Energy Center? What else can we do with that geographically poised property that has so much potential? What can we do with that and the surrounding area that could absolutely be transformational. The other thing that we want to do, the Convention and Visitors Bureau, is we want to refresh that visioning study we did in 20, 2007 and perhaps do what Rick talked about, is building in a tourism master plan, sort of this master plan of, you know, what is the lens of the visitor in 40 years? And how do we um, find out, again, why are people coming here now versus in 2007? And what are our guests that we are now booking events for in 2020 and 2025? What are they going to expect and how can we deliver what they expect? So I want to thank all of you as our partners because, yes, this is our job, but we only do it with you. You, you, make, you actually deliver the experience to visitors. We bring the visitors here and you deliver that experience. So thank you for doing that. Have a great evening and thanks for coming. Thank you.